was one of the most interesting little projects that you've done? Probably one of the most fun ones I've done myself is uh, with our youngest daughter. Mm -hmm. We went down when I was building the black truck and we found these little Nash Metropolitans. Uh -huh. And I told her about it. So she went back down with me down to the wrecking yard to get some other parts. And we picked her up a little 1960 Nash Metropolitan. Oh, and she was, I think, what, thir 13 yeah. years old. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, she would come up to our shop in the summertime. It was a two summer project. And she'd work on the, the car and help me in this and that. In fact, when I got ready to put it back together, I had to get her up to the shop. I couldn't remember how it went together. Mm -hmm. She did all the disassembly and the sandblasting and cleaning on the car oh, to get it ready to paint. Yeah. And then it was, it was a lot of fun because it definitely gave her the opportunity that most kids, even the young boys, don't get is spending that time with dad on a project and, and having dad's attention pretty much full time That's right. and so when they finished that up that was that was her car and she was known as small fry and you know she only stands five four in, in that and little gal and when she drove it to school the first time she got a terrible time because the boys she'd park it four boys would get a hold of it one at each corner they'd pick it up and move it Oh, so oh she never goodness. knew where the car was going to be when she come back right, out after right. school. I bet she knew a lot more about the uh, cars than a lot of them. She does. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hilarious because her husband Dusty's awesome man. He uh, when, when Melissa and Dusty first met, uh, Dusty was or Dusty was telling Melissa, she, "Man, I, I got the '68 Camaro and da 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 da." And Melissa grew up around drag racing, hot rods, and all that. She says, yeah, my folks have a 42 Ford that has a blown big block Chevy in it. And it just kind of took the powder out right there. <laughs> so I think the kids would come up to the shop, and Dusty would have his Camaro, and he'd be tinkering with it, and Missy would finally say, okay, get out of the way, now I'm going to get this job finished up. But uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun with Melissa. When we were building the car, I'll never forget one day, she uh, brought a girlfriend up with her. She was always the, the Tom Sawyer, Huck uh, Finn deal. Uh, she brought a girlfriend up with her and she went in one, a couple hours later and told mom, she says, mom, would you take so-and-so home? And Mary says, well, why? And Melissa says, well, she won't work. So, you know, she's no dummy. <laughs> yeah. Melissa was, is the youngest one and she's gotten into the mechanical side of the vehicles and that. But we also have an older daughter, Christine, which when we opened up our business, street or Dowdy's Automotive in Boise, mm -hmm. uh, Chris came in and was working with us. She was our PR person. She uh, loved people in that, and she always spoke to everybody about the cars and the dragster and, and our racing and everything. But she is now runs that business. Wow. She's been up there for 25 years now, wow. and she totally runs the business and operating it with. You know, five technicians out back and two employees up front, and uh, she uh, she's been in that automotive industry too. So it, it kind of fits in with the rest of the heritage, I guess, with my grandfather. I grew up with him, and he started in 1915 towing, and like Dan said right, earlier, yeah, yeah. first Texaco station in Conifer, Colorado, and started pumping fuel in 1921. And uh, the business is third generation right now with the towing. Um, I grew up with two brothers and in a salvage yard with over 500 cars in it. So of course that's what our playhouses were, were the cars. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> and so I learned young to love the vehicles as well. Yeah. We're looking at some of Mary's work here, some of her embroidery. And Mary, tell us a little bit about this. Well, what this is is the area where I do my embroidery. I've got my two machines, a Tajima and a Baby Lock. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can see I got a lot of hats in stock. I do a, a lot of hats for different people around the area and all, and mm -hmm. I get into Henderson and Las Vegas as well. But this is my production area for this in the office area. But what I mainly do in this area too is I get into my custom designs and do my digitizing. The digitizing, the majority of it I do myself because I want to 
I don't want a cartoon character when I do when I have a car that I'm doing for someone. Uh -huh. I want the car to look pretty much realistic. And so that's why I do it myself. And that's been about a two year operation learning how to do that. Uh, yeah. It's it's not just a plug in play on the computer. Yeah. It is digitized on the computer and then I put it on the machine and stitch it out. But I have here this is what I call a stitch outline where it's an outline of our terraplane mm -hmm. and this is just a lightweight stitch that goes nicely on the t-shirt and I do a lot of these for different people and then a little 32 Ford high boy this was done for a customer out of Henderson and then of course the flame on the back of a jacket that's I do a beautiful. lot of corporate work mm -hmm. and then there's a, a local company Vix Tees that I do I do their embroidered work as well mm -hmm. and you can look to the back here there's two vehicles that are stitched out there's a 55 Ford pickup that I digitize and then a 41 Willys beautiful work your fondest memories or best memories of a show you did or a place you went? Oh, one of the funnest ones I think we had is we were doing a race up in Seattle, Washington. And it was a big bracket race, but we also had some of the NHRA people up there. The girls got to meet Shirley Muldowney. Um, Darn Garlitz was up there. But this was a big bracket race. We had our dragster up there and running with the top fuel style wing on it and come up on the launch and uh, well first we did the burnout you know warming up the tires and that and we knew the track was pretty sticky well then we took the first launch on the first pass there and front end of the dragster come about six feet off the ground <laughs> we come down and Dan went through the the track or down the track and everything we got back to the pits to see that everything was okay and we continued racing but that was pretty exciting knowing that the car would do that so. and it was <laughs> yeah. yeah it was the drag race was fun the kids went with us all the time and it was fun because we used to videotape every single pass so we'd go back and look at the tires and and just watch the car and study it and, and analyze it make it better and chris was always our video person Mm -hmm. And then uh, Mary and the girls, they were they were the pit crew. Mary was licensed and drove the dragster also. <laughs> and she went 160 miles an hour with that herself. Wow. And it makes it kind of nice with that because then everybody knows what their, each other's your jobs and duties are. So you kind of can share in that mm -hmm. and know where the other person is coming from. Yeah. Shop tour is November 7th, uh, 8 to 5. It's on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, it is open for people who want to come in and you know bring your RV and hang out with us and that on Saturday that's great but it's November 7th uh, here at our facility and uh, it's it's easy to find and I tell people all you got to do is just head for the Grand Canyon mm -hmm. you look for the skywalk and when you hit the 12 mile mark back up 100 feet you, you can't miss it you know we've got the gas pump and the, the 16 foot Texaco sign out there we've got the old 35 Ford Wrecker Studebaker sitting out front that just there's multitude of cars out here if you get lost around this area most people just ask because they, they don't know where we're at yeah that's right well let's get your contact information one more time yeah that's uh, Dan at Desert Concepts or you can uh, call 928-767-3171 mm -hmm. and we'll get you set up we're here to have a lot of fun last year we ended up we by the time the day was over, we were doing burnouts out front and all that. <laughs> Nobody can say anything about it because it's on my property. Well, that's right, yeah. We get the foreigners stopping by and they just go ballistic. And oh, yeah. We just have a blast.